I guess my simple question is, how bad do you think it's going to get in terms of inflation going up and growth going down in the United States and elsewhere? So I don't think this is like the 1970s at all, where people were expecting steadily uh, accelerating inflation. This is a time where we'll have some temporary inflation. Everybody's expecting it to come back down. So inflation is not the kind of problem it was in the 1970s, where we thought things were out of control. What is worrisome is this prospect of a sharp fall in, in the rate of growth. And this is what we should be focusing on and thinking about what do we do to sustain growth during a time when inflation is going to be a little bit worse and then come back down. So, so that's interesting because as I hear what you're saying, if you're going to be concerned about something, be more concerned about the possibility of a recession or slower growth than you are about stagflation. Absolutely. And I, I heard you say the expectations. How critical is that to the stagflation question? A lot of people are talking about these days. What exactly is stagflation? Well, stagflation was a period of stagnation, meaning no growth or even a recession, uh, a fall in output, combined with um, some inflation. And in the 70s, people were surprised that you could have both. These days, we're not surprised. You can easily have both no growth or falling output and inflation. But the question is, how do you respond? And if it, the, 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 one of the key things to remember is what Keynes pointed out about expectations with this story about like the beauty contest. If everybody thinks some person will be selected as the most beautiful, then everybody will say, well, that's the most beautiful. If everybody thinks it's somebody else, it could be somebody else. So right now, if everybody expects steadily increasing inflation, then you're going to get actions that will lead to steadily increasing inflation. But this is not what everybody expects. Well, that's just what I was going to ask, because the more markets give us some indication of those expectations. Do we see that as a, I guess they call it, unanchoring of inflation expectations? Yeah, no, I, I don't think we do. And so what, you know, we've been a little bit surprised that it came up because we had, you know, decade or more with uh, no response in, in prices or inflation coming up. So it's coming up a little bit, but everybody's expecting it to come back down, which is critical, and that they're expecting central banks to be the ones who make sure it comes back down. But that still leaves us with the question of what are we going to do about a fall in the rate of growth? One of the things that you and I have talked about in the past is the extent to which we have great and growing income and wealth inequality in this country and what can be done about it. There is a piece in the Bloomberg right now that on the wealth front says that actually, perhaps surprisingly, that has reversed in part because of COVID relief and in part because of a tightening job market. Are we really addressing the fundamentals of wealth and income inequality? Yeah, this is the, the hidden and unnoticed true success of Biden's policy, because we've got wages growing faster in dollar terms uh, for the people at the bottom end of the, the, the skill distribution. Yeah, and just, so this just is to interrupt you a second, we're we'll, putting a chart up now for our TV audience, yeah. but I want to explain to our radio audience that you provided, actually, that shows, yeah. and the dramatic thing is that top line, which is well over 6% rate of growth, is in the lowest uh, quartile, and the, the higher quartiles yeah. are actually growing, growing more slowly. So I just want to explain that to our radio audience. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, and so this is this is what you need to reduce wage inequality, is people with the, the lowest wages have wages that are growing faster. But the problem is nobody's wage is going to fall here. So the only way to have much faster growth in the lower part of the wage distribution is for average wages to go up a little bit more. So one of the benefits of this period of, of, of higher inflation is going to be that we can start to close some of the wage gap and help the people at the bottom catch up. So so can that be maintained? I mean, part of the question in my mind is how much of this was specific to COVID relief? Because we can't expect the same kind of, of fiscal stimulus going forward. And how much of it is because of the tightening wage market? And yes, indeed, perhaps because of inflation. Yeah, well, I think we can sustain this longer than people are thinking. And I think we should set us our goal to return to the policies we had in the 1990s. Wages were growing faster at the bottom. More people, more adults, a larger fraction of adults had jobs than we have now. We still have a long way to go to get back. We're not even back to where we were in the fraction of employed adults before COVID hit. So we want higher wages at the bottom. We want work to be more attractive. And we want everybody who's capable of working to work. Does the administration deserve some credit for this? Because I'm not sure they're getting it if they deserve it. 
Well, they're certainly not getting it, but I think they do. I think their strategy of aggressive stimulus and continuing to push for the infrastructure spending, which could be a, an ongoing form of, of stimulus, they were determined, I think, to keep the job market tight, to keep it hot. And that's what we need if we want people to catch up. And remember, we don't want to reduce in inequality by just giving cash transfers away to people. We want everybody to feel satisfied and willing to work. And higher wages in the bottom end of the wage distribution are the way to get more people willing to join the world of work. Dr. Weber, explain one thing to us. I saw in your notes, actually, the relationship between inflation and higher rates on the one hand and the value of cryptocurrency on the other. I had not made that connection. As I understand it, you think there is a connection. Yeah. So um, the, the one thing that's very likely here is that nominal interest rates are going up. Inflation will be higher. Nominal interest rates should go up in parallel with the inflation. The nominal interest rate usually doesn't matter. What usually matters for an investment decision is the real interest rate. So that's the nominal minus the inflation rate. But the one place where nominal rates matter is if you're holding something that pays zero return in nominal terms. And that's what like a stable coin offers, or that's what a, you know, a holding dollars offers. Um, the higher I inflation is, the less attractive it's going to be to hold uh, these stable coins. And so I think it's inevitable that they're, they're going to collapse. They're a, they're a dominated asset. Uh, so, Dr. Moore, finally, to sort of wrap this all up, given what you say about uh, the desirability of keeping a fairly tight wage market so that the wages, particularly the lowest quartile, go up faster than others do, does that tell us something about what you think the Federal Reserve should be doing with policy? And that is to say, maybe they shouldn't be trying to tighten so fast to try to cool down the labor market. Yeah, I, I've, you know, I said before, um, last time I was on, that we should be kind of careful about overreacting right now. We want to bring inflation down, and we could even experiment with a target inflation rate that's a little bit higher than we were thinking before. I think, you know, the kind of rate, inflation rate that people like, uh, you know, Olivier Blanchard were talking about a, a, a few years ago, like a 4% inflation rate. If we decide that 4% is too high, we could bring it back down to 2 if we want. But let's not go overboard and try to get down to 2%, you know, within like two quarters or four quarters, because we could really damage growth and damage the prospects for wages for these people who are finally getting a chance.